Hi, I'm Brian from Tenant Company, and in the next few minutes, this video will show the proper startup, use, and end of shift steps for your Tenant 800 Ride On Sweeper. Please remember to read and fully understand the operator's manual and safety labels before using the machine. Now, let's take a quick tour of the machine. The 800 is the largest and most powerful machine in its class. Designed to sweep heavy concentrations of industrial debris, pellets, rocks, and glass found in the harshest industrial and manufacturing environments, both indoors and out. The 800 sweeper's rugged steel T-beam superstructure, bend-resistant steel back wheel bracket, and optional heavy-duty tower bumpers will stand up to your tough environment. Let me tell you a little bit about how this sweeper works. The direct throw sweeper technology uses a one-piece main brush to throw dirt and debris forward into the hopper. The multi-stage filter system with available HEPA filtration ensures everything down to the minute particles will be captured by your sweeper. The 800 is equipped standard with a 50-inch main sweep brush and a right single side brush like this one, increasing the overall sweep path to 66 inches. With the optional additional left side brush, the sweep path expands to 82 inches. In addition to making your sweeper more productive, the side brush is great for sweeping right up to curbs, storage racks, and walls. After the brushes and vacuums have done their job, the dirt, dust, and debris will be deposited here into this 30 cubic foot hopper, which can be raised up to six feet for dumping. Back here is the engine. Your 800 may be equipped with an LPG, diesel, or gasoline engine. This one is an LPG model. The operator compartment features an adjustable suspension seat, power steering, tilt wheel, intuitive controls, and clear sight lines, and can be equipped with an optional overhead guard or enclosed cab with heat and air conditioning to make operating the 800 easy and comfortable to run all day long. So now that you have an idea of where everything is, let's go through your pre-work checklist. First, open the engine compartment and search for loose fittings, obstructions, and check the oil level. If necessary, add enough of the proper weight oil to reach the full mark. Check the condition of the V-belt. There should be approximately a quarter of an inch deflection on the belt. Adjust if necessary. The engine air intake system should also be checked. The air filter service indicator indicates when to clean or replace the air filter element. Check the hose connection and remove and clean the dust cover. When replacing the cover, be sure the arrows are pointing upward. Check the coolant level. Then check the radiator and hydraulic oil cooling fans. They should be unobstructed so that the air can flow freely through the radiator and the hydraulic oil cooler for maximum cooling. Finally, check the hydraulic fluid level sight gauge. With the hopper down and the fluid cold, you should read between the add and full marks. Check to make sure the hopper skirt is with an eighth of an inch from the ground. Check the condition of brushes. The side brush should be replaced when the bristle length reaches two inches. The main brush should be replaced when the bristle lengths reach one and a quarter inches. Make sure there is no debris tangled around the brush. Check the fuel level. If you need to change an LPG tank, park the machine in a safe area and access the tank located under the operator seat. Close the tank service valve on the tank and then operate the engine until it stops from a lack of fuel. Set the parking brake. Now you can remove the quick disconnect hose, undo the tank hold down clamp, and remove the empty tank. Now, put the new tank in so that the tank centering pin centers the aligning hole in the tank collar. Fasten the tank hold down clamp to lock the tank in position. Connect the fuel line to the tank, making sure the connections are clean and undamaged and everything fits properly. Finally, open the tank valve and check for leaks. If you detect a leak, immediately close the valve and contact the appropriate personnel. Now, let's take a look at the Tenet 800's controls. When it's time to start the sweeper, you will use the key. Turn it clockwise to start the engine and counterclockwise to stop the engine. To the left of the key is the instrument panel. In the bottom right corner, there is the engine speed control on the LP and gas powered machines. Diesel machines will have engine RPM controls on the engine display module below the key. Idle speed is indicated by the first light, low work speed is indicated by the second light, and the third light is the high work speed or transporting speed. Here is the vacuum fan switch. 
These are the switches for the lights. This one for the operating lights, and this one for the optional rotating light switch. This switch is for the filter shaker. The filter shaker is timed for 45 seconds, but can be turned off in the middle of its cycle if necessary. This is the engine hour meter, which records the hours that the machine has been running. This is the fuel gauge. For gasoline and diesel units, LEDs will indicate the amount of fuel that's left in the tank. For LP machines, however, when the tank is full, none of the segments are lit. When the tank gets low on fuel or is empty, the last two segments will flash. Here are the machine's indicator and warning lights. This is the hopper door light, which will come on when the hopper door is open. Above that is a clogged filter indicator. If this comes on, you should shake the filter. This is the main brush shutdown light, which will illuminate if there is excessive down pressure on the main brush or if there is a problem with the main brush hydraulic circuit. The battery indicator light will come on if the voltage of the battery is below 10 volts. The oil pressure light indicates low engine oil pressure. The water temperature light comes on if the engine coolant temperature is too hot, and the hopper temperature light comes on when there is excessive heat in the hopper. The vacuum fan will automatically turn off if this light comes on. To the left of the instrument panel is the hopper lift lever, the hopper rollout lever, and the hopper door lever. To the left of the operator is the two-speed main brush switch. In the top position, the brushes rotate at normal speed, and in the bottom position, the brushes rotate at high speed. This two-speed system allows you to sweep different types of debris. Normal speed is typically what is used, but the higher speed may be good for light litter. Next to the main brush switch are the controls for the side brushes. Side brushes can be independently controlled if the machine is equipped with dual side brushes. This is the side brush down pressure knob. This knob is used to increase or decrease the pressure of the side brush. This is the parking brake. To set the parking brake, pull up on the lever, and to release it, push down. To slow or stop the sweeper, press the brake pedal. To control the speed and direction of travel, you will use the directional pedal. The harder you press the pedal, the faster the machine travels. To propel forward, press the top of the directional pedal with your toe. And to propel in reverse, press the bottom of the pedal down with your heel. If you take your foot off the directional pedal, it will return to the neutral position and the machine will cease propelling. The top of the directional pedal is adjustable. Simply remove the clevis pin, adjust the top of the pedal to the desired angle, and then replace the clevis pin. Above the pedals, you will find a set of circuit breakers designed to stop the current in the event of an overload. If a circuit breaker is tripped, it must be reset manually. To reset, press the reset button after the breaker has cooled down. If the circuit breaker trips again, contact your tenant service technician. This is the horn button, and this is the steering column tilt lever. Now we've gone over all the controls you will need to use. Let's get ready to sweep. It's important to pick up debris like pieces of wire, string, banding, or plastic wrap, which could become entangled in the brush before sweeping. Also, it's best to plan your sweeping in advance. Try to arrange long runs with minimum stopping and starting. Sweep debris from very narrow aisles into the main aisle ahead of time. Do an entire floor or section at one time. Sweep as straight a path as possible. Avoid bumping into posts or scraping the sides of the sweeper. Overlap the brush paths. For best results, use the correct brush type for your sweeping application. Consult your operator manual for recommended applications. Sit down in the operator seat and adjust your seat and steering column for your comfort. Turn the seat adjustment clockwise to increase the stiffness or counterclockwise to decrease it. To adjust the steering wheel, simply pull up on the tilt lever. Turn the ignition switch to the start position. For diesel machines, you will need to wait until the glow plug light goes out, and then start the engine. If the engine fails to start within 15 seconds, wait 30 seconds and try again. After warming up the sweeper for three to five minutes, set the engine speed to fast. Check both the main and side brush pattern following the step-by-step -step instructions outlined in the operator manual. Proper brush pattern will maximize both sweeper performance and brush life. I think we're ready to put this workhorse to the test. Let's get sweeping. First, you'll drive over to where you want to start sweeping. If you're new to tenant sweeper, spend a few minutes sweeping in an open area to get used to how the sweeper handles. The Tenant 800 steers from a single rear wheel, so it might take a little getting used to. The rear wheel steering is very responsive to the steering wheel movement, and you will find that for such a big machine, the 800 is highly maneuverable. 
Avoid turning the steering wheel too sharply when the machine is in motion. The machine is very responsive to the movement of the steering wheel. Avoid sudden turns, except in emergencies. Once you arrive at the space to be swept, it's time to get the brushes and vacs going. The 800's main brush features two speeds. We recommend using the normal speed position when picking up general debris and using the faster speed when picking up light litter, as it will improve both litter pickup and hopper loading. Lower the main brush by pressing the main brush switch into the appropriate speed setting. Lower the side brush by pushing the switch into the on position. The hopper door has to be closed during sweeping. If your machine has the hopper door light option, make sure the hopper door light is off. If the hopper door light is on, close the hopper door by pushing the hopper door lever to the left of the operator upwards until the light turns off. Then return the lever to the middle position. Turn on the vacuum fan and begin to sweep. When sweeping, you will need to adjust your speed based on the debris you were sweeping up as well as the complexity and congestion in your area. While the 800 can travel up to 10 miles an hour, it's a good idea to sweep no faster than a person can walk, about three to four miles an hour. Remember to overlap your brush paths and watch out for any obstructions, and of course, be safe. When the hopper is full, it's time to dump. First, raise the side brush and turn off the main brush. Then, turn off the vacuum fan and head to your dump site. Before dumping, push the filter shaker button. This will activate a 45 second timer, shaking the filter clear of dust. When you are positioned to dump, pull back and hold the hopper lift lever and release it when the hopper is at your desired height. Now, pull down and hold the hopper rollout lever until the hopper is rolled out. Pull and hold the dump door lever to open the door and dump its contents. If you are dumping outdoors, be sure you have positioned you and your machine upwind of your dump site and that you don't raise the hopper any higher than required. This will help keep you and your machine from getting covered in whatever you are dumping. Reverse the process and continue sweeping. If for any reason you need to leave the machine while the hopper is in the raised position, be sure the sweeper is on a level surface, the parking brake is set, and that you have put the hopper support bar into position. To set the hopper support bar, raise the hopper all the way up, remove the bar from the storage clip, and position the bar. Then slowly lower the hopper so the bar rests on the machine frame. To disengage the bar, reverse the process. Once you are done sweeping for the day, return the sweeper to its parking place, set the parking brake, switch to the idle position, and turn off the ignition with the key. Be sure to close the valve of your LP tank on LP-powered units. You've now learned the basics of successfully operating your Tenant 800 sweeper. For detailed information on maintenance and operations, remember to check out the operator's manual available on Tenant's website. At Tenant, we know clean buildings are important. Hardworking people in hardworking environments deserve a safe and healthy environment. And we are proud to be a small part of the effort to make that happen. We also know that buildings don't clean themselves, and the care you take every day enables people to be their best in the spaces you make clean. We hope the work we do to create efficient and effective cleaning equipment helps make your tough job just a little bit easier. Thanks for watching, and thanks for what you do.